topic of Sola Scriptura is all about the question of authority. How are we to test and determine good and true theology and practice? For those who follow Christ, it's by Scripture alone that we as Christians must base our theology. This is Sola Scriptura, or Scripture alone. But what exactly does it mean? As S.D. Ellison defines it, Sola Scriptura is the assertion that Scripture alone is the highest and final authority because it is divinely inspired, inerrant, and sufficient. Now, this doesn't mean that all truth is only found in the Bible, but only those things that relate to our salvation and spiritual life. It also doesn't mean that tradition, sermons, church creeds, or books and commentaries aren't helpful or true. It just means that they need to comply with good interpretation of Scripture. So because of this, my pastor says, or, but no one else, or, but we've always, is not the standard. Can those doctrines and practices stand up to what God says in his word when it, as Paul says to Timothy, is handled and taught correctly? That is the standard. We find this definition expressed in Paul's second letter to Timothy. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. This passage is telling us a few things about scripture. Firstly, that it is of God's breath, which is the same Greek word for spirit. If you place your hand in front of your mouth and speak, that force you feel is the same idea as God's breath being his words of scripture. Peter describes this in his second letter when he says, No prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So, scripture is the word of God. Second, since scripture is the word of God, then we know that it is true, and we know that it is authoritative. It's used to define what is true and false. Scripture is to be used in a twofold way. One is to communicate truth about right doctrine and right living through teaching, and the other is to correct and rebuke what is false doctrine and sinful living. We're not to use our wisdom nor stand on our own sense of morality, but rather proclaim what God has breathed or spoken. Thus, Scripture is the means by which those who belong to the Lord are to be discipled and brought to maturity. Now, there are plenty of books and other resources out there that teach us how to interpret the Bible well, so I won't go into much detail here. But what I will say is that because of the nature of Scripture, it's important that we read and study God's Word on its own terms. So, we can't make it say things that it doesn't say because it offends our sensibilities or doesn't make sense or to suit our lifestyles. We need to let it speak for itself. So why is Sola Scriptura important? Well, it's God's chosen means of special revelation to his people. We cannot learn about God's purposes, his will for our life, the depth of his character, his promises, and the means of being in a right relationship with him by looking at sunsets and waterfalls. Creation does give us a hint of the glory of his nature, but scripture teaches us about his character. This means that scripture is something we should treasure and hold above all. It also tells us that being God-breathed, scripture is a point where God communicates with us. We see this throughout the book of Hebrews. Although there are some preachers who prefer to refer to the Bible's human authors, the author of the book of Hebrews consistently calls the Holy Spirit the Bible's author. For example, when quoting Psalm 22, instead of writing, David said, they write, as the Holy Spirit says. And note the present tense, not the Holy Spirit said, but says. As I read these words penned thousands of years ago, they aren't just giving us a record of a conversation, we're entering into a conversation with God. The Spirit still speaks to us in His Word. This is similar to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians. Also, After talking about Israel's rebellion in the wilderness, the author of Hebrews wrote, Now these things happen to them as an example, but they are written down for our instruction. Some people say that the word gets in the way of the spirit, but for a more personal revelation, as though they are separate. But as I've heard it said, scripture is the classroom of the Holy Spirit. Third, we need it to guard against lies and deception. This is why God chose to preserve his revelation in written form. We need something objective to test our belief about God's with. 
This is one of God's tests for a false prophet that he gave Israel. He said, If a prophet or a dreamer or dream of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder that he tells you comes to pass, and if he says, Let us go to other gods, which we have not known, and let us serve them. To worship another god is not only to disobey God's law, which was written down, but the way one tests for a false god is to compare it with the way he has revealed himself in Scripture. Many claim to worship God and believe in Jesus, but they are not the God of the Bible. So this need for an objective test is because of the fallen nature of humanity. As John Calvin said in his Institutes, If we think of how inclined the human mind is to forget God and how easily it is led into error, by what flights of fancy it dreams up hour by hour new and counterfeit religions, we may readily understand how necessary it was for the heavenly doctrine to be couched in written form, lest it perish through forgetfulness, or lest through error to be corrupted by the impudence of men. Whenever God wished to provide men with profitable instruction, had recourse to his word. Whenever the enemy tries to deceive God's people, he challenges, twists, or adds to scripture. In the garden, he said to the woman, did God really say? Mormons have their extra scripture, which they interpret the Bible through. JWs have the teachings of the Watchtower, which sit above the Bible, which is not unlike the Catholic Church in Luther's day. And there are those in the name of being more spiritual say Christians need to be willing to go off map, which is outside of scripture, preferring God told me in a dream to God said in his word, leaving people open to deception from Satan, who disguises himself as an angel of light, because the means of testing is rejected as legalism and Phariseeism. So Christians should take the canon of Scripture seriously and exclusively. So, if we want to be those who worship the true God in spirit and in truth, then upholding an attitude of sola scriptura is important. Music